Tom, Tom, mm. Tom, 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 yeah. Tom. Yeah. Tom. I got, uh, I got, a, I got, I got a game. Matt, Matt, I got a fun game. You want to play a game? What time is it? This is really. I nice. got it from a man called Wolfgang, uh-huh. like a gang of wolves, but mm-hmm. a man. And it says it's like a game show in a box. Mm-hmm. I gave him all of the money uh, that you gave me to go and buy that cow. Yeah, I mean, it looks, it looks really great, Matt. But like, I mean, I don't think I've got any friends around this time of the morning to play something like this. He said you don't need friends to play this game. You just need acquaintances, and we've got all the acquaintances we need. Hello, and welcome to Wavelength, the game show with The Dial. On tonight's show, from all the way in sunny Scotland, Inish. From the hills of La France, it's Condesier. And finally, say hello to Tom, a board game boy man. So folks, how are you all feeling? Yeah. Great, let's see if you're on the wavelength. The first question, is pet. What? It's pet. Love or hatred? What will you choose? <laughs> Tom! It seems you were right, but not quite right enough. And so because of that, you're going to have to face the consequences. Ah! And that, in a nutshell, is how you play Wavelength. Apart from all of the looming dread and the bit where I pressed a button and made Tom fall into an underground vat of uh, hot jam, this isn't a game that punishes people, not even with delicious, warm, preserves. But before we leap into the jaws of this review, we've got some due diligence to do. Now, this game is a collaboration between Wolfgang Varsch, creator of The Mind and Quacks of Quedlinburg, and also the team behind Monikers, a game that we liked so much we made two expansions for it. A small one that you could fit in your pocket, and a far bigger one that came out late last year. I think it's really good. I squeezed a terrifying quantity of jokes into this box, uh, but because it is available to buy online, we kind of need to have a solid upfront chat about this. You see, you might not realize, but Shut Up and Sit Down was founded on the dusty ancient bones of journalists. And because of that, somewhat unusually, we don't accept any money in exchange for coverage or sponsorship in any of our editorial content. And with that in mind, you kind of have to realize that we have an ongoing business relationship with some of the people who made this game and while i think that i have a good enough control of my own biases to not let that impact a review there's no reason that you should also believe that and it's important that you're aware of the situation before we go on and you know what it would have been easiest to just not cover this game in a review but the problem is wavelength is absolutely phenomenal it's a fascinating brilliant thing and it felt like in the grand scheme of things, as much as I'd like an easy life, it would be doing a disservice to the hobby to not talk about it. So with that cat fully out of the bag and starring in an unloved CGI movie, let's do a review. Players are split into two teams who'll take turns one after the other. And on any given turn, one person is elected the psychic. And they get to take this big chunky dial and spin this thing, revealing the scoring zone, but for their eyes only. They will then slide this plastic turquoise door over the circle, memorizing the position of what they just saw and taking a look at the top card of the deck. In this case, we've picked up vice and virtue. So I then have to come up with a clue for the rest of my team so that they'll get this red pointer in the right area. So for this example, Pop-Tarts might be a good suggestion. And they'll hopefully twiddle the dial and get it in the right area before sliding back the door to reveal the scoring zone. We got it. Tom, why do you think pop pop tarts are really on that much of a vice, are they? Oh no, uh, my half brother was killed by a pop tart. Oh, I'm really sorry about that. Um, also, didn't I just murder you in a vat of hot jam? No, after my exposure to the dial, I can't die anymore. I can only become stronger. Sure, I'll I'll accept that. But I know what you're thinking. Won't the other team feel really left out with all this pointer action going on? 
So after the playing team has positioned the dial, the opposing team gets a chance to guess if the real answer will be to the left or right of the pointer to score an extra bonus point, and the first team to 10 points wins. But Tom, that's so simple. Surely there must be more to this game. No, it, re it really is that simple. That's, that's all the rules, all the rules on the game. We can't be, we've only just started the review. We need... Do more rules. Okay. Um, the, the winner of the winner of Wavelength will receive a whole ass rotisserie chicken and you can also play the game co-op. You just need some pieces from the Baron Park, Baron Park game. What happens um, if you run out of pandering closures? If you run out of pandering closures, then then you, that's when that's when you bring out bring out the backgammon. So we've told you what this game is. Now let me explain what it isn't. A lot of the time when we recommend party games on Shut Up and Sit Down, we get a lot of comments quite reasonably saying, "Ah, oh, I tried this with my group and we completely bounced off it. I wish I could play a game like this with someone as hilarious and handsome as Matt. And I'm like, sure, fine. I get it. I'm sorry. But the reason we adore games like Monikers and Fun Employed is because they are engines for outgoing people to do ludicrously silly and hilarious things. But obviously, that's not gonna be everyone's jam. Matt, can you please stop mentioning jam? I'm still trying to get out of my ears. This game though doesn't demand that you do any of that. And partly that's because it's less of a party game and more of a party trick. The most dazzling of game shows requires a host with pizzazz. And the host of Wavelength? It's Wavelength itself. And the clue? was right in front of us the whole time. Look, it's got a sparkly jacket. And look at this thing. Hey buddy, what's that box? Man, I remember seeing that box in classes last year. And then you pop it open, the big dial, the clackety screen. If most board games are boiled vegetables, then this baby is tempura. And if you've ever tried to get people who don't play games very much into them, you probably know there's nothing more awkward than setting up a game whilst people are there. Yeah, last time we played this, oh, everyone had, everyone had so much fun. I, ju I just need to shuffle those, actually. I'll explain in a, I just need to shuffle some, honestly, it's really just, uh, Meanwhile, Wavelength, it pulls up into town with a handbrake turn. It's here, you're interested, get in the car. You could even set it up in the actual box, bringing it into a room as if you're delivering a fancy cake or a religious relic. We've played a bunch of party games that have you trying to guess what somebody thinks about a certain issue, and honestly, they're a mixed bag, largely because that's a pretty dangerously contentious thing to do sometimes. Luckily with this, because the person being the psychic is the person who chooses the exact clue, it means you're not gonna end up having a conversation about whether or not your uncle hates or loves capital punishment unless that's something that they've engineered themselves, in which case you probably just need to get a new uncle. And the second reason it works, perhaps more importantly, is that the fallout of the reveal, but what, uh, is preceded by a period of collective compromise. This wiggle of people going, no, could be here, oh, no, until you're finally nudging it to the exact position where you think it could be. And that just means that when you do have disagreements, that prior wiggle makes everything feel a lot less brittle. And even though this dial sits like slap bang in the middle of the table, it's kind of a misdirection because the real centerpiece is this little dial and more importantly, the punctuation of moving it to where you personally think it should go. Here? All right, how about a bit, a bit more this way? Here? Here? Okay, cool. It means that the reveal itself isn't the only enjoyable part of the game. It's actually just really satisfying coming to a sense of agreement with everyone else. And when you get something completely wrong, the game rewards you, not with points, of course, but with the abstract currency of a good time. And Wavelength's fail state is the part of the game that produces its best moments. It's when you can disagree with someone's weird take that sausage dogs are the, the freakiest creatures on earth, or that taking drugs is the worst crime possible ever. 
The magic behind Wavelength is subtle but sneaky, attracting you with a flamboyant outer layer that it quickly sheds, instead opting to curl itself around a social gathering like a boa constrictor made of vibes. Yeah, I've never been so starkly aware that you are 21 years old. Yeah. All right, fine, Grandad. It's like a giant rotisserie chicken that you can share with your pals. Oh, now you're talking language, are you? Yeah, chicken. Yeah. I mean, speaking of meat products, I was playing this with a couple of friends at the pub and one of the categories that came up was ethical to eat or not ethical to eat. And the psychic gave his team the clue, paneer. So we started to think that paneer is probably reasonably ethical because it's not meat and then kind of considered, oh well, you know, just because it's dairy doesn't mean it's ethical. I mean, dairy is not that ethical at all, so we should probably put it somewhere in the middle, maybe? And then we remembered the person giving the question and we're like, you know, this guy probably thinks that anything that isn't meat is super ethical. Should we just slam it all the way to the end like this and see what happens? And lo and behold, four points for us. And this was wonderful because not only was it hilarious, it was also immensely satisfying, which is the kind of joy you can only get out of like the best party games. In another of our games, we had the loved to hated card. Now, the psychic on our team decided to give the clue Harry's mum. Now, of course, Harry was playing the game with us, so we said, how about you mess with the dial? To our surprise and shock, he put the pointer right in the middle of this dial. And we were like, okay, fine, I guess. And we revealed the dial and oh, it's completely off. Like, of course, this section was where it was meant to be, Harry. We all love your mum, we think she's great. How much do you love your mum, Harry? You monster. But playing with people who you don't know at all is equally delightful. There's no point psyops mind diving, so it's all about just collectively coming to an agreement about an unusual question, and maybe at the end of it, learning something about someone you don't know very well. And now we're staring up to a bit of a bombshell in the fact that just like Monica's before it, Wavelength isn't a very good game. The first to 10 points wins. In the same way that in Monica's, you're supposed to count the little numbers on the bottom of each card and get a score for each round, so at the end of the game, you know which team wins. But here's the thing, it doesn't matter. This whole premise, once again, is just another beautiful trick. If I was to say to you, hey, this box, it's great. It's like a, an engine for having really cool, interesting conversations with people. You, most people probably wouldn't want to play it. And that's because people who don't play games as much, and even people who do, they want games where you try and win. And as evangelists of play and games, and hopefully as people who watch this channel and love it, we know that play can be so much more than that. But for a lot of people getting into it, they don't want or need to know about that just yet. They want to know, how do I win? And they want to have chunky pegs to record the scores. And so my favorite thing about Wavelength, and the reason we're here reviewing it today, is that most of the times I've played it, I've played it with people who don't really play all that many games. And in every circumstance, I've had to leave and people have said, oh, but Matt, we want to keep playing for a bit longer. And I said, sure. So I've left it with them. And the next day, the same thing has happened. They've come up to me and they've gone, oh man, we played it for hours and hours. And, and then they've kind of guiltily admitted to me, but we, we didn't actually keep playing with the teams and the scoring. We actually just sort of like started taking it in turns. Wazazu! I mean, what a beautiful, magical Trojan horse using the traditional trappings of chunky scores and teams to ensnare people into a wonderful social experience that you otherwise would not have got people to engage in. And so maybe we got it wrong. Maybe Wavelength isn't a game show host. Maybe Wavelength is a magician. Ooh. Sparkly jackets, often not as conclusive as you might think. Finally, if you're watching this review and you think you might enjoy Wavelength, but maybe would struggle to get it to the pub or struggle to get a big enough group for it, then something like Medium is really, really fantastic. It's got a similar feel and is a little more actively competitive, both for better and for worse, but it's compact and fun enough to flourish if Wavelength doesn't sound quite right for you. 
And that's Wavelength. Such an easy recommendation to make. It's all of the magic of the mind, but with such a delightful production. The, the, the click of this, the fact that it sort of does itself thing Ooh. there. Twisting this little thing has a very gentle kind of feedback to it, like you're cracking a safe. Everything about it is just incredibly immediately enticing and the experience is a joy. It's a, it's a classic to the extent where I kind of feel like it's always been here. Uh, anyway, thank you very much and join us next time on Wavelength, Wavelength the, the show game show with, with the, 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 the dial. dial. Thank you for watching this video from Shut Up and Sit Down. Um, I would recommend you watch another one. Maybe a video about other similar games or a video about how to better teach the rules to a game. Of course, I don't need to be taught any rules. I make the rules. Have a good day.